Okay, so to remind you, my project had three parts. One was the seminar on philosophy and psychology of wisdom, which uh, I'll be teaching this fall, and I'm still happy to get feedback from people about that. Uh, second are the experimental philosophy studies on folk conceptions of wisdom, which I'm designing now. And then the main part of the project is my book, Rediscovering Free Will, uh, chunks of which I've completed along with uh, some related publications. So here I'll just give you a glimpse of how I'm analyzing the connections between free will and wisdom, um, practical wisdom specifically. But I really can't summarize my view any better than my son Lucas. I asked him uh, on Father's Day uh, to get a little help from my presentation, what is wisdom? He was happy to define it. Uh, after thinking about it for a second, uh, he said, knowing what to do. Um, and those four words pretty much summarize my view, though I might mess up his brevity by adding and knowing how to do it. Um, my goal is to analyze the form or structure of practical wisdom such that its diverse content can then be filled in depending on varying cultural and individual contexts. The idea is to take the basic psychological capacities that allow for free and autonomous action and agency and, uh, and add a normative component, uh, component to then provide the structure of practical wisdom, which are those capacities that allow one to lead an autonomous good life. Uh, so more specifically, and quickly, free will involves the cognitive and volitional capacities to represent various alternatives for future action, deliberate about them to determine what you really want in light of a consistent set of principles and goals for action, uh, and then to control one's action in light of these principles and goals, where such self-control sometimes involves conscious efforts of will, but often involves habituation and non-conscious action control. So that's a very rough analysis of the structure of free will, the content of which gets filled in according to an individual's particular background and goals. The structure of practical wisdom, I think, has a, a similar structure to free will, um, uh, except that it involves that normative component of effectively using the capacities for free will to make good choices, given one's context, first as a human being that evolved to have particular functions uh, which give us certain values, such as avoiding pain or caring for one's offspring. And then uh, in the context of a particular culture, which instantiates, the, instantiates those more general values in particular ways. And then as an individual who confronts particular challenges and choices. So wisdom thus involves the capacities to represent the various alternatives for actions, not only as better or and worse given one's own particular interests, but as better or worse given these broader contexts and values. Wisdom involves the capacities to choose the normatively better alternative, where I mean to be first a pluralist about the good, such that there may not just be one best alternative, um, but there are certainly better and worse alternatives. And second, I mean to be a contextualist about the good, such that it's not fully objective, true irrespective of any contingent facts about human beings, but neither is it, is it entirely relative, given the contingent facts facts, objective facts, about human psychological nature and culture. Finally, practical wisdom involves the capacities to act in accord with the good, to exercise self-control where necessary, and more importantly, to habituate yourself to do the right thing. So again, wisdom is knowing what to do and knowing how to do it. So setting up the structure and form of free will and wisdom in this way, I think has two auspicious implications. The first is we don't have to treat free will or wisdom as an all or nothing phenomena, um, the way some analyses do, but rather more intuitively, both can be considered possessed uh, by different individuals to varying degrees, depending on the degree to which they possess the relevant psychological capacities, and also exercised by individuals um, to varying degrees, depending on the opportunities they have to exercise those capacities. And second, and maybe even more importantly, this uh, analysis allows free will and wisdom to be naturalized. Uh, since they're identified with a set of volitional and cognitive capacities, we can study them scientifically. For instance, psychological studies of the way the mental capacities work, like the ones many of you are doing, and neurobiological studies of um, how these psychological functions are implemented in the brain. We can also study how they evolved from precursors in, uh, in other species and why they evolved to be uniquely well-developed in humans. 
and we can study how they develop as children mature. Again, reminding us that it, it's a, a degree concept since children don't suddenly get wisdom or autonomy overnight. The fact that free will and wisdom are capacities implemented in the brain doesn't itself imp impose a threat to their existence despite misleading conceptions uh, uh, of the way neuroscience might threaten free will by showing that, quote, our brains control us. But these sciences of the mind might indicate significant limitations to our capacities for free will. For instance, we seem to know less about what motivates us to act than we think, um, and we can be influenced by situational factors that we wouldn't want to motivate us if we knew about them. And because our brain is a big energy consumer, it's not surprising that we have limited resources for conscious decision making and self-control. But increased information from these sciences of the mind might increase our autonomy and wisdom, uh, perhaps even more so for our children who we can habituate to be more virtuous. The wise person, for instance, will learn how to manage her limited resources for deliberation and control. So I'll stop there um, in my attempt to explain why practical wisdom, at least, is knowing what to do and knowing how to do it. Thanks.